Hi guys, this is gonna be an art channeled message. I usually call them twin flame readings because not only do I talk about love, I talk about a very various different things depending on what I get. And it's never exclusive to just love and twin flames. And I feel like twin flames can mean many things. You know what I mean? So yeah, this is a twin flame art channeled message slash maybe oracle and tarot depending on if I feel it needs more. Okay, so this is the painting I finished about a couple weeks to a month ago. I haven't used or put this wood canvas to good use for months, but I was feeling pushed to do a cardinal. Spirit is really urging me to do that. I'm also frequently visited by cardinals and I'm into photography so I have plenty of pictures of them too, like more than enough. And usually they're really nice pictures, like to the point where they're really visible or very close to me, like up close and personal. <laughs> To where like, you can see them. <laughs> this painting started out as a sketch of a cardinal. That was really the only thing I didn't necessarily channel. Like, that's the only thing I sketched or outlined. The rest was just as I went. I mean, sort of. I think it's interesting too how I had a strong desire to do that out of several things it could be. Like, why? I was like, cardinal, cardinal, cardinal. Cardinal is going to be on this. Cardinal is what I'm going to paint. So, that's what I ended up doing. And for good reason. But the rest of this is history, like I said. I just let it all flow. Literally. Water is a major element here, as you can see. Here, here, and even up here. Cardinals are messengers. In fact, the channeled name slash title for this piece is The Messenger in Disguise. That's what I got. The cardinal is love in disguise. A loved one in disguise. Red is the color of many emotions. Shyness, anger, love. To me, it even represents beauty and warmth or the element of fire. Red is just a beautiful color. Even in fashion, I feel like it says a lot. Someone is watching over you. Eyes everywhere. Someone is watching over you. I'm even seeing we're being watched as a whole, as a collective. They see the chaos, the pain, they see how we're treating the earth. This was my uh, probably my, my favorite part because it's supposed to be a tree, but it formed into a to into the earth, into a globe. They see how we're treating the earth and they're angry. I said red can represent a plethora of emotions, but I'm mostly seeing anger with that. Angry that we're not operating in a space of love, compassion, and beauty. The world is full of beautiful creatures, which is a cardinal is one of millions. It's full of beautiful landscapes, but it's slowly deteriorating and we're watching this unfold. Even the messenger in disguise is seeing this. With the teardrop here, next to the cardinal, I'm seeing that as pain, literal tears, and also the element of water once again. Okay, not only are cardinals associated with the Christmas season, there are also messages from past loved ones, as I've previously stated. Someone in heaven, or whatever you believe in, loves you and is actively watching You'll notice you get signs mostly when you're in peril, 
crying with the teardrop next to the cardinal. This angel is here to wipe your tears. When the world, the fire surrounding the cardinal, this fire sur shielding the cardinal, becomes overwhelming, unbearable. I'm also seeing again this as we're literally destroying our planet. We won't have resources for much longer. We're hitting the peak slash climax mountains. We're hitting the climax where irreversible damage has been done. It's interesting because you know how that's actually stated with global warming? Eventually, we will surpass the ability to even fix it or make it better. And I'm also seeing polar bears right now. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Polar bears are used to that cold climate, the ice, but it's melting and they're not supposed to be in a climate where it's all water. It's like their climate is being tainted and messed with. That's how what I also see with this. It's like our creatures are suffering. Even we will be suffering. If not now, we will. My art even represents all four elements, earth, fire, water, and air. After all, you can't have one without the other. That's why in my painting, they seem to perfectly mix with each other. And fun fact, I did not even mean for the fire here to perfectly align with the actual fire up here. Like this looks like fire water, it's almost like there's three layers to each element, but then it perfectly aligns with the top here. One That wasn't even intentional, honestly. When I looked back at that, I was like, wait, just look, look at how all of this mixes. I've stated in previous videos, my art is like an optical illusion. It's like you see many different things. Even when you look at it again, you see more than you saw previously. Pretty cool. Okay, now let's talk about this eye down here. It sticks out. It has the same vibrant red coloring to it that I was putting emphasis on. I kept getting blood moon. That's a way to describe like one behavior of the moon. It even has the appearance of a real blood moon to me. A blood moon occurs when there's a full or total lunar eclipse. During this, the Earth directly lines up, <laughs> like it does here, it directly lines up with the moon and the sun. And I've said many times that I consider, in general, that the moon and sun are sisters. They're both up in the sky, but they both do different things. They both act differently. And when it comes to the science aspect of blood moons, air molecules from Earth's atmosphere cover most of the blue light. Then the remaining light reflects onto the moon with a red glow. And didn't I say Earth's elements intermingle with one another, especially within my art? And around the blood moon, I is blue. Like, you can't tell me this this shit isn't real. Like, that's insane. There's that red glow, and here's the blue that's covering. The red is outshining the blue. The destruction, the fire, is outweighing the calm waters, is what I just got. Which will lead to irreversible damage. The peak, the mountain, which I'm seeing is the earth element, the grounding we need. And there's even a little water on top of here, flowing. The next blood moon will be in Sagittarius, a fire sign, which is very ironic, considering what I just said. And it's in 2021, this year now, around May. I don't think it will be visible to everyone, so that's cool. 
little extra tidbit of info. We are in fact having another one soon. I decided to look that up after I got this information. So another one is approaching rather soon, within three, four months. But I, I don't think it's gonna be visible in the United States. Now onto the water here. The river is flowing and lines up with the water here and this, it cuts off right there. Once again, it's lined up perfectly. The water is flowing, but it's stopped by this tree branch. I'm seeing that as a halt to one's growth. Someone stops growing, stops flowing. And then past the branch is the fire water. I said these are layers. It's like almost like it's mixing right here. Okay, that fire water that I said astonishingly lines up perfectly with the fire up here that, that the cardinal is also shielded from. It, it's almost like something's interrupting our flow for good reason. We need to wake up. We need to see that things won't be comfy cozy if we continue down this destructive path. Because really, if you avoid something, if you don't look at it, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. <laughs> And what I'm seeing now as well with the Cardinal being protected from the fire, the Cardinal is, the Cardinal started the fire. The Cardinal is a fire. You can't be hurt by something you already are. And you can't be hurt when you're in your element. And to me, in your element also means like, you're comfortable. You're at peace with yourself. You've gone through your changes already. You've gone through enough growth to understand that you'll be okay. This destruction going on is all a wake-up call. We need to wake up. We need to see what we're doing to the earth, especially. For some reason, I'm just getting it. This is a collective message for the environment, the earth. We're not going to have many resources much longer. And with the water here, I'm seeing too, that's unlimited resources. Eventually, we're going to struggle for them. And I also wanted to mention with like 2020 as a whole, <laughs> there were periods where that was already happening, like the toilet paper, some places still don't have clean water. That's what I'm talking about. And over here, we have what looks like a volcanic eruption on the right side. Lava is flowing all the way back to where the fire lines up. And way back when I did my Bumblebee Jasper video, I compared that stone to a tower moment. Natural disasters represent tower moments. And here we have it again making an appearance. I'm seeing as a part of this wake up call, we will be seeing more natural disasters and literal volcanic eruptions. I know there are some volcanoes that can't erupt for years, but you always have to be aware of it. Change is always a possibility, but are you prepared is the question. I don't want to say this is the end of the world. It's not, this isn't, this isn't supposed to be scary or anything, but you know how they say the end of the world, they describe what it could be. And then they mention like, it's going to start with bad weather, maybe even forest fires, eruptions. I think I, I remember seeing this video one time where it's like multiple ways the world could end. And there's this one where if this volcano or if this thing erupted, we'd all be wiped out. I forget what that was called, but that really freaked me out for a couple of days. I was like, what? <laughs> that can erupt and cause that much damage. It's like there's so many theories, but one thing still stands is we need to treat our world better and we also need to treat the people the creatures that live inside the world better we need to grow because if we don't especially when it comes to global warming it'll become like irreversible damage 
because we're already having damage in like areas where penguins and polar bears live. That's that's not good. Okay guys, that was this art channeled message. That's what my art means. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm so proud of this. I love cardinals, I love birds, and I love the environment. So it's really nice how this tells a story. They all really do like mix together and tell you everything you need to know. Okay guys, bye.